Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What? Uh, David Cross, why America sucks at everything. The Gravel Institute, uh, this has been recommended a few times by you communists over there. I, may, I like to make jokes, okay? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, all right, I'm open to it. Um, open mind. My name's Connor, did I say that? I'm from Rhode Island, New England, USA, in that order, and I like to learn about things and watch stuff on YouTube. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that. Link to the Discord. Sure, all right, let's hear, hear his case. Is that loud enough for you guys? Yeah, that should be good. All right. America's bad at... Continues to be bad at everything. Rat pageant. Good. America is the greatest country on Earth. The strongest, the richest, the most powerful country on Earth. As an American, I'm sure you've heard that roughly 135 times a year. At least. 235 year, yeah. if you go to public school. 335 if you go to a Christian academy. <laughs> We're told that Americans have the best lives of any people in the world. That we have low taxes, small government, and the highest living standards on earth. And most inaccurately, that we're the freest. Well, I want to go through Lenin, but I'd say yeah, except for the last one. I, I think we, there's this stereotype in America that like the Northern European countries have the best living standards. But uh, yeah, I get what he means. Sorry. Let's, let's hear it out. On earth. And most inaccurately, that we're the freest. Well, it is partly true America is the richest country, not just in the world, but in the history of the world. It's really hard to comprehend just how rich we are. More than we have Romans, 18 or? million people who are millionaires. American households own about $100 trillion in wealth, an almost unthinkable amount of money. Okay, so America is the richest country ever. Even taking into account inflation, I mean, you can say like the British Empire and Roman Empires were empires or the Mongol Empire, but I mean, if those were countries, even with inflation, America is, is richer than they were. Interesting. But okay. there's a curious paradox. Most Americans actually have a much worse standard of living than people who live in poorer countries like Germany or Finland or Britain. But how can that be? That shouldn't make any sense. Well, here's the shitty deal. Americans get significantly worse services because our tax dollars don't fund them. So of course our services are worse and thus we enjoy less happy lives than people who live in the aforementioned countries. Not that difficult a concept to conceive really. You get what you pay for, said the cartoon dog to the other cartoon dog. And while you might think the reason American tax dollars don't fund as many services is because we pay lower taxes than other countries, that's not even true. When you add federal, state, local, and sales taxes and include other costs and services that our taxes don't cover but other countries' taxes do, like our uniquely high health insurance premiums, you'll find that Americans actually give away more of their wages than most of the developed world. For example, in Canada, for a married worker with two kids, all of the previously mentioned costs combined, from taxes to health insurance premiums, make up only 11% of the average wage. In the UK, it's just about 26%. Meanwhile, once you tack on the cost of our outlandish health insurance premiums, you're spending a whopping 43% of your paycheck. That's more than France, Finland, Sweden, and Norway. In real reality, Americans keep much less of what we own than in other countries. In other countries, their government takes a bit more tax, but then gives that money back to their citizens in the form of health care or job support or a general safety net for all vulnerable citizens, no matter how dusky they are. So what do Americans get for the money we pay in? Well, sure, we get a crumbling infrastructure, shameful homelessness, and millions of hungry, neglected children, but we also get some of the worst services in the developed world. Again, our healthcare. American healthcare is simultaneously the most expensive, the least efficient, and the least effective healthcare system in the developed world. <laughs> hey, the devil's trifecta. And in exchange for this extremely expensive, inefficient healthcare system, what do we get? 
Well, we get some of the worst health outcomes in the developed world. We have fewer hospital beds per capita than people in Turkey or Brunei. Americans have a lower life expectancy than people in Lebanon or Cuba. And in the Mississippi Delta and much of Appalachia, life expectancy is lower than in Bangladesh. In fact, in 2017, the United Nations sent a commissioner to West Virginia to document what he saw, and he described, quote, third world conditions of absolute poverty, unquote. We even have a higher infant mortality rate than people in Russia and Serbia in every single... Really? than people in Russia and Serbia. In every single metric, America does worse across the okay, board. Okay, that, that's pretty bad. So why I didn't know that. is healthcare so expensive? Because it's so complicated. You have to look for in-network physicians, schedule an established care appointment, beg for coverage from your insurance company that couldn't care less about you, and that's if you're lucky enough to have good insurance. Compare that to Britain and all of those other evil socialist-like countries where Tommies, thank you. I'm joking, okay? I like to have a laugh. Compare that to Britain and all of those other evil socialist-like countries where it's simple. Public hospitals provide free treatment to people who need it. That's it. I'll repeat that. Public hospitals provide free treatment to people who need it. I and free. here's the thing. Do you mean free free? Or like free But then, like, you got a bill later. That's part. Even though Britain offers health care for free, their system is actually a lot cheaper to run than ours. Per capita health care spending in the U.S. is almost three times what it is in Britain, and almost five times what Canadians spend. In fact, Americans spend the most per person of any country in the world for health care. But the free market is more efficient, you screech. But in America, private systems often aren't efficient at all. Private drug companies have an incentive to charge whatever they can get away with for pharmaceuticals. In Canada, a carton of insulin costs about 20 bucks. In the US, it costs 300 bucks. And with private insurance companies footing the bill, hospitals have an incentive to get as much money out of patients as possible too. In 2015, the average cost of an MRI scan in the US was $1,119 but it was only $215 in Australia. Spain, about 181 bucks. And our healthcare system is so inefficient that we spend over a third of our cost on administration. The United States spends significantly more on administration than we spend on preventative or long-term healthcare. That's just not smart. United States, over a third of our cost, one bucks. And our healthcare system is so inefficient that we spend over a third of our cost on administration. The United States what, spends what significantly that, more on that? administration than we spend on preventative or long-term healthcare. That's just not smart. Okay, we get it. We all know that American healthcare is so much more expensive, you say, but that's the cost of having the freest freedom in God's favorite country. Well, guess what? Medical procedures that are totally free in Britain, like giving birth, cost tens of thousands of dollars in the United States. I mean, you want to talk about the cost of freedom. Sadly, because of these high costs, Americans often avoid going to the doctor, something almost half the population say they do. With shoddy or non-existent health insurance, Americans will wait until their conditions force them into the emergency room where treatment is far more expensive. Again, not a smart system. Quite often, they end up putting off medical visits and dying. Susan Finley, a 53-year-old Walmart employee in Colorado, got pneumonia and took one day off of work beyond what Walmart's policy allows. So of course, Walmart's gonna Walmart, which they did by firing her. Without her job, she lost her nominal health care coverage, she struggled to find new work, and after avoiding a visit to the doctor for flu-like symptoms, she was found dead in her apartment. When Americans do manage to get treated, they frequently can't afford it. Simple, life-saving treatments can cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, and if they don't have really good insurance, they're forced to take on medical debt tens of millions of Americans owe medical debt, often into the tens of thousands of dollars. Meanwhile, I also know that 
I, I don't know that this is a big problem, but I, I suggest, I, 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 I assume it's a big, is that, um, the idea of going to the hospital or, or getting an ambulance, um, I think the, the fact that it's going to cost you a lot of money, I think gives a general, a, like a subconscious feel to a lot of Americans that, if if it was cheaper or free to get a ride to the hospital or to get a hospital visit, um, then they would be more willing to go and check up for things that bother them a little. And I think because of the fact it's going to be a lot of money, something that could be serious might be pushed off and then you could end up paying the price for it. And um, I, I think that's a big problem. While in a country like Britain or Norway, medical tens of thousands of dollars. Meanwhile, in a country like Britain or Norway, medical debt is almost unheard of. But hey, that's why GoFundMe is such a critical component of American healthcare. One in three GoFundMe campaigns is now for medical bills. I'll repeat that. One in three GoFundMe campaigns is now for medical bills. America is such a strong, powerful, rich, and great country that its citizens have to beg strangers on the internet for money so they can get life-saving treatments that are free in the rest of the developed world. But hey, that's just healthcare. Americans get terrible deals wherever you look. Let's take work, for example. Americans work longer hours than people in any other rich country in the world, and that's not because they enjoy sleep deprivation and not seeing their families for days at a time. It's because they don't want to starve. Even more than Japan, I was watching a Japan... I, can't, I shouldn't go on, off on too much of a tangent. I was watching a, a video about Japan and South Korea. Japan, where they... Uh, never mind, I'm gonna go off topic. Sorry, I'm breaking up the... Okay, focus. Terrible deals wherever you look. Let's take work, for example. Americans work longer hours than people in any other rich country in the world, and that's not because they enjoy sleep deprivation and not seeing their families for days at a time. It's because they don't want to starve or freeze or die. See, America has the least generous job support programs, the least generous family benefits, and the least generous unemployment benefits of any wealthy country. It's one of the only countries on Earth that doesn't guarantee paid time off for vacations. It doesn't even help provide paid time off for parents who just had a child. And it's not coincidental that we're also one of the most hostile countries to workers' rights. America has one of the lowest unionization rates in the entire world. Maybe this deprivation, our refusal to give people the means to lead a good, dignified life, commensurate with how rich our country is, can explain a bit of what we've seen in the United States over the last few decades. Fraying communities, rising rates of depression and suicide, huge numbers of deaths from drug overdoses. These so-called deaths of despair, suicide, drug overdoses, alcoholic liver disease, they're one big reason why American life expectancy has actually started to decline over the last few years. And with such poor conditions, it's not a surprise that poverty is so rampant in the United States. America devotes a smaller percentage of spending on social welfare than any other industrialized economy because, say it with me, socialism is evil. True. It's evil. Guys, I'm joking. These are very good points. I hope you don't, I hope my crude, stupid comments that I like to make don't come across as if I'm not taking this seriously. I am. I just like the joke. Say it with me. Socialism is evil. It's Brother. evil. Go to Denmark and try telling those happy, healthy families enjoying their paid vacation that their system of government is evil. Guess what? I guarantee they'll know you're an American. Yeah, but I don't think that Denmark is a socialist country. Right? I mean, no. It, it, isn't every country in Europe, including the Nordic countries, Whoever's saying those countries are socialists, I, I don't understand what they're saying exactly because every son, so social, a socialist policy is, is pretty much any policy that takes taxes and, and puts it to the benefit of everyone, right? And um, so I just think they have more socialist policies. I think there's more socialism in Europe, especially Northern Europe, than there is in the US, but that doesn't mean that they're a socialist country. You know, like, um, but I, I get the point. So I, I think that's not a great equivalency there. Um, yeah, I mean, Northern European countries and a lot of European countries 
a lot of credit to them. They they have something that works. I do have a few rebuttals at the end, but uh, I'm going to save it. There are a lot of great points, too. Guess what? I guarantee they'll know you're an American. But I digress. America also has the highest rate of child poverty of any developed country and the highest percentage of workers earning significantly less than the national median income. That seems pretty evil to me, especially since such a tiny fraction take as much of your money for themselves and their families as you will let them. All the while, both parties smile. It's pretty evil to me, especially since such a tiny fraction take as much of your money for themselves and their families as you will let them. All right, let me listen to that again. Tiny in income. That seems pretty evil to me, especially since such a tiny fraction take as much of your money for themselves and their families as you will let them. All the while, both parties smile. What does he mean by that? I, or like, can you guys explain to me what? And shake hands. Across every single metric, no people accept a worse deal than Americans today. High taxes, high cost of living for next to nothing in return from the government. The most expensive healthcare system for the worst health outcomes. More money taken from workers for the highest rate of child poverty. We are the richest country in the history of the world, but we have fewer miles of high-speed rail than Uzbekistan. We are the greatest country in the world, yet we have the most people in prison of any country and the highest incarceration rate as well, and a higher rate of police killings than in Angola and Sudan. Of police killing. I'm trying to justify it, Jesus Christ. I understand, guys, I have a bias, okay? I'm, I'm taking in great points. I'm, I, I know I'm, I'm look seeming defensive at some points, um, but I, I hope... You, I hope you try and understand that I, I really am trying to take this in and um, and do my a best. higher rate of police killings than in Angola and Sudan. America's bad at everything. <laughs> I was saying like, well, that's police killings, as if I'm trying to like justify it. I'm sorry. Rate of police killings than in Angola and Sudan. America's bad at everything because instead of choosing to make life better for people through a public health care system or more generous child care policies or better public transit or programs that allow people to spend more time with their families, American law is designed and crafted to protect a class of parasitical middleman industries. Instead of using a proportionately tiny piece of the massive amount of the wealth in this country to make people's lives healthier and happier, most of our elected leaders are and have been for generations engaged in a massive project of looting. Gently and lovingly guiding as much money as possible from working people into the pockets of the well-connected and the ultra-rich. Think about that as we start hearing... I don't deny that. I, I, I'd agree with that statement. ...about the inevitable rise in homelessness, poverty, starvation, and sickness that will occur during these coming months and years in the greatest, strongest, richest, most powerful country on the face of the earth. I'm David Cross for the Gravel Institute. Uh, good video, guys. Good, uh, really good video. Um, uh, everything, honestly, he said were good points. I think a few of them were, look, at look, okay, I'm not going to just sit back and, and just not tell me, t tell my, what's in my head, all right? If you don't like what's in my head when I'm saying it, then, you know, you can leave, whatever, that's fine. But uh, I'm, I'm going to give my opinion and tell me what you want. Um, So, I think I'm going to do a little bit longer of a, of a at post video talk than I usually do. Um, by kind of going through some of the video. My overall thing. So, first off. First off. What are the few things I'm about to say right now, the next, like, two, three points, is not an excuse. So, make sure you know that. I'm going to talk after this. So, don't don't think that I'm saying these things and therefore... It's okay. All right. So my first part is, and a lot of you are going to be like, oh my God, is do you think that we tend to be the richest country in the world because we care less about the everyday citizen and more about profit? Do you think that's the case? That, no, that's not a, a, 
I'm not saying that's a reason. Say, hey, we should we should get that GDP, not GDP per uh, just like that GDP as high as we can. And if that means letting really rich people keep making a ton of money and the biggest corporations building wealth and wealth and and building um, revenue and a assets, whatever, just net their their worth uh, to contribute to the to the total sum is that. Do you think that contributes to our overall kind of wealth? So uh, that's one. Again, that's not saying, that's just a question. Two is, this is just a fact. Again, it's no excuse. I'm just saying reality. I'm not saying what I want. And I know I'm being redundant, and I have to, but I really do feel like I have to say this, like precurse every one of my, my opinions with, this is not me saying this is all doesn't matter because this, all right? And that's the the sort of Wild West mentality of the U.S. I think a lot of people um, mis misinterpret, um, like when he says, is that freedom or whatever? Um, like, are, are we the, the freest country in the world if we can't? Paradox. It's like Germany or Finland or Britain. Shitty deal. Americans get significantly worse service. Services are worse. That difficult a concept to consider. And we low. Uh, oh, saying like, oh, we have, we're like, we're, we have more freedom over here or something like that. And then he points out how, well, um, this many people are in prison and this many people uh, are, are in poverty and this many people um, are homeless and, and all those things. Does that look like freedom to you? And... I think the harsh reality of America up until, you know, for all of it, its history, it has been less of bringing every, every American up and more of like, hey, this is America. Come here. You can, you can, you, like, if you come to America, you can go as high as you want and you can go as low as you can go. So the highest high you can achieve in America as an individual is extremely high. And the lowest low you can you can sink to in American life is much lower than a lot of well-developed countries, okay? This isn't me bragging. This isn't me saying it's a good thing. This is me saying it is a problem, but it's a, I think it's a reality. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a result of the American sort of mindset that isn't Canadian or European that um, when they say freedom, I think it, it's more like, you're free to fall or fly, you know? Um, and my, that might sound tor terrible, horrible, horrible, terrible. Um, but I, I think that's an, another thing too. So I think sometimes people misinterpret that. I, um, it, it's not like the, ooh, everyone is free and everyone has the ability to do everything. It's like, no, as an individual, you're free, more free from other countries, from other citizens. Does that make sense? Like, your dollars mostly are going to stay your dollars and they're not going to contribute to the upbringing of everyone. And that, that's, that's not a great thing, but at the same time, it's American, you know, that that's what the psyche has been like. And this is just me. I'm one person there. There's over 300 million people here. They could all, many of them differ, different opinions. That's one thing. I'm sure you're all pretty mad. Um, some and some great uh, stuff like um, the the incarceration rate. I'm not sure why it is so high in the U.S. To be honest, um, I, I'd like to see the trends over time to to see exactly what triggered it. So that's a big thing. The infant mortality rate part was a big shocker. The fact that infant mortality rate in America is lower than Russia. I mean. If that is true, that's that's shocking. American more uh, infant mortality. Uh, I just want to see if it really is. Um, five point six. Uh, Russian um infant mortality. Um, four point nine seven seven per whatever. Five point six deaths per what? So it is. That's crazy and that's bad. That shows really bad. Um, a lot of great points, really good. Um, and uh, a few things I, I didn't really get. And so I, I'm not saying that that 
what he says is untrue or that we shouldn't adopt a lot of European things, but I think that Europeans need to realize that America is a very different place from Europe. Very different. Um, in many worse ways, and I think in many better ways. Um, I'm biased, sure. Uh, I hope I took that video pretty well and was open-minded there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to speak with my mind, say what's on my mind. If I look like an idiot to some people, I look like an idiot, and uh, you can let me know. Um, love these videos. and Keep watching them. See you guys next time. Hope you're doing well. Love you guys, all right? I hope you can be nice in the comments if I said some absurd stuff to you. See you next time.